And we are especially delighted uh, to uh, have our sister, uh, Deborah Johnson, and our sister is going to come now and bring to us uh, her first message in song. Thank you, Deborah. Amber for that lovely piece, um, a beautiful piece written by uh, her Horatius Bonner, uh, one of my favourites uh, out of the book. Uh, we're going to ask uh, Deborah's father now, Brother David Johnson, um, Brother of Sylvia is here to come and give us a word of personal testimony. Thank you very much, David. Well, I'd like to thank the Reverend McLaughlin for this opportunity of coming along to this meeting house tonight and giving a personal word of testimony is quite a wee while, well, maybe not so long. I used to be given a testimony every Sunday night around the mission halls and different places, but I've been off the beaten track for a wee while, and I gave it down and uh, listened to Gaver Orange Hall when our brother was speaking, and he mentioned there, maybe you'll come to Gary Duff and give a wee word of testimony. <coughs> so that's why I'm here tonight, but I'm here to thank the Lord and praise the Lord. Our brother mentioned in the prayer meeting in Psalm 115, not unto us, O Lord, mm -hmm. not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. And we can say in First Corinthians 15 and verse 10, But by the grace of God I am what I am. I have the great privilege of being brought up in a Christian home. I'm the second youngest of a family of eight. De uh, Deborah, what do you call Sylvia Deborah? But uh, you get that with age. Sylvia is the youngest of that family. There were five girls and three boys and my father and mother. And that was ten of us around the farmhouse table. And I can look back to many happy memories there 
have a great upbringing. I was strict. We kept the Sabbath day. We went to church faithfully. We weren't allowed to polish our shoes on the Lord's day. I wasn't allowed to whistle on the Lord's day. But it was a great upbringing. My fa- father was uh, a great manager and my mother was a very godly woman. And I can look back to many happy memories in that home. I was reared in the townland of Church Hamlet, and that's in the electoral district of the Bam side and North Antrim, the greatest constituency in the world. And uh, I went to a church where the word of God was faithfully preached. Amen. And I never uh, knew uh, anything else than I knew I needed to be saved and born again of God's spirit. I realized very early on in life that if ever I was going to get to heaven, I would have to be born again of God's spirit. I knew that by going to church and saying prayers and doing good deeds, these are all good and necessary, but they wouldn't take me to heaven. I realized very early on in life that I was born in sin and I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And if ever I was going to reach heaven's shore, I would have to be born again of God's spirit and washed in the precious blood of the Lamb. The Shark and Free Church was formed before I started Sunday school, so that'll give you an idea of what age I am. And I never went to any other church but the Free Church uh, and, and Rishargan, and I'm going to Garva at this moment. But you know, that didn't save me. Having those privileges and knowing from a very early age I needed to be saved, it didn't save me. I turned my back in a godly home and I turned my back in godly parents, went out into the world and sought the pleasures of the world. Does the world satisfy? There's a certain amount of satisfaction in the world, but many a time coming up the road home, we lived about a mile above Rishark and up uh, the uh, mountain line, as we called it, next Larry Ford, and up the road home and gone in the lane. I used to say, is this all the world has got to offer? Have I, have I been cut off along the road? I'd went to that place where God has forgotten to be gracious, where the worm dieth not and where the fire is not quenched. And thank God there's a mission came to Rishagan in 1964, conducted by Dr. Paisley. And I remember the, the uh, Sunday night meeting. My father didn't drive. I was taking him home. And he said, don't put it off too long, for you could miss God's opportunity of salvation. And I stayed behind on the Monday night. Dr. Paisley wasn't there, but it was Dr. S.B. Cook was uh, the minister in Rishagan at that time. And I'm sure Dr. McElveen will forgive me for saying that he was the greatest preacher uh, ever the free church ever knew. Mm-hmm. And I'm biased, of course. But, uh, but he uh, was speaking that uh, Monday night. And I want to say that although I stayed behind and God's servant pointed me the way of salvation, I wasn't willing to have done with sin. And before that mission was ended, I was drifting into the world as bad as ever again. I was involved in the Young Farmers Club at that time, and, and there may be not so much wrong with the Young Farmers Club, but as they talk about the 19th hole of the Gulf, as always the thing to watch. And for two years I drifted on, and I was a very miserable person. But thank God the Lord gave me another opportunity on the 27th of November, 1966, one Sabbath morning. Uh, and our own church in Rishargan sitting in the very back seat that's the old building and the Reverend McElveen will know where that is uh, uh, where the free church started I was sitting in the back seat there just forms of air and uh, God's servant I couldn't tell you what I was speaking about but I didn't have to be told I needed to be saved he came to the very end of the service and he said we've been praying very definitely for this service and we know that God hasn't mocked us and thank God that we're praying and praise God, they were praying for me, and I had the opportunity uh, at the, after that uh, uh, service to go round to the wee room, they called it the session room, down the side of the church and into that little room. And God's servant pointed me the way of salvation. Mm-hmm. I'll always remember it. Uh, he, he pointed me to John 6 and 37, All that the Father giveth me <coughs> shall come to me, come. and him that cometh unto me I will in no wise... <coughs> Just out to explain salvation like this to me. He says, if this were your sins here. And the Lord Jesus Christ took your sins and his own body on the tree. Then you can go free. And I can say tonight, upon a life that I did not live. And upon a death I did not die. Another's life. And another's death I stake my soul's eternal welfare. Thank God that was a spotless life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never man was born like him. 
born of a woman, born under the law to redeem them that were under the law. Never man lived like him. The prince of this world cometh, he was able to say, and has nothing in me. And thank God, never man died like him, for he died uh, uh, as a substitute, just as the ram was substitute for Isaac. Uh, and appointing forward to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ died in my guilty room and in my stead. Praise God, he paid the ransom that I couldn't pay. I wonder tonight what you're depending on in this meeting tonight. You know, life at best is very brief. Mm-hmm. It's like the falling of a leaf. And it's like the binding of a sheaf be in time. I work in Ballymoney still, and there's a young woman there, 42 years of age, and she just dropped like that into God's eternity, leaving three young children. We never know what a day will bring forth. And oh, I trust that you'll be ready. The Lord has been with me down through life. I come home, and God's servant pointed me to read the first epistle of Peter, and I come home and go down at the side of the bed before we had any, uh, anything to eat. And God spoke to me and gave me the assurance that he had accepted me for Christ. It says in First Epistle of Peter 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope. It's not a dead hope, it's a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance which is incorruptible and is undefiled. And it fadeth not away, and is reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. I thought I couldn't keep it, but you know, we couldn't keep it. But thank God the Lord's able to keep us. Mm-hmm. And we believe in a God who's all powerful. We believe in a God who spake this world into existence, and he keeps it going by the word of his power, and none can stay his hand. Or say unto him, What doest thou? And after we got something to eat, we went out along the lane, and the birds were there. And I thought, Surely the Lord's looking after these wee birds, and there's not a sparrow fall to the ground. But our Father knows all about it, and thank God he's able to keep He's able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless and stainless before his presence with exceeding great joy. The Lord has been with me down through life. I have proved the Lord in times of sickness. I prove the Lord in times of sorrow mm-hmm. and when we need a friend to help us thank God he is the one we've been married for over 40 years now and Evelyn's very gracious I know that and we have two of a family Deborah and Samuel and they have three uh, children each and thank God five of them saved Amen. and trusting the Lord and the wee ones two and a half and we're praying for weeks away mm-hmm. The Lord save her. Mm-hmm. I wonder where you stand tonight. Are you sure you're born again and washed in Jesus' blood? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Say, will you be ready when Jesus comes? There's a wee hymn that often speaks to me. It's Isaac Watts' hymn, and I often, I often dwell upon it. Why was I made to hear his voice and enter while there's room? By thousands made a wretched choice and rather starve than come. Twas the same love that spread the feast that sweetly forces in, else we had still refused to taste and perished in our sin. May the Lord I encourage you to come tonight. Thank God all things are now ready. Preparation has been made. We're hearing that around the table this morning. Thank God all that is required to be done, the Lord Jesus Christ has done it. Why not come? Why not come tonight and accept the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ? For you know there's a great day coming, day whenever the Lord is going to burst the clouds and come. And there'll be no time then to prepare. I just want to read you three verses before I sit down. I hope I'm not taking up too much time, brother. You're fine. As we found in Revelation chapter 6, we're living in terrible days and they're maybe only going to get worse. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read you four or five verses before I sit down. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs 
when she is shaken of a mighty wind. This is, this is going to happen. This is future. God is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. And it says there in heaven, the heavens departed as scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains, Fall on us, mountains and rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come. And who shall be able to stand? The only person who will be able to stand in that day mm -hmm. are by those who have accepted the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and are hiding in him, hiding in thee, hiding in thee, thou blessed rock of ages. I'm hiding in thee. I wouldn't like to be living today without the Saviour. Mm -hmm. It's great to have the Lord with us. We lay our head in the pillow at night. We can talk to the Lord. We can talk to him in the morning. It's not always easy to live as a Christian. I would say the last five years have been the hardest in my Christian life. But thank God it'll be worth it all. Mm -hmm. And it says, even in uh, Hebrews, consider the high priest and the apostle of your profession. Yes, you be faint and weary in your minds. Thank God he's with us each step of the way. And thank God he's going to present us faultless and stainless before his presence with exceeding Great joy. May the Lord bless us. We word of testimony to your hearts for his name's sake. Amen. Well, we do thank David very much for that uh, straightforward, clear, plain uh, word of testimony. I, I have known uh, David uh, many, many years and was delighted to hear his testimony down in Resharkin in the month of November. And we did ask him if he would come. We were hoping that the whole family would come and fill up our own, but that wasn't possible because it would be bringing them all uh, from Garva. Uh, but we are delighted that his daughter Deborah is with him, and uh, she was singing uh, that night he gave his testimony, and we're going to ask her to come and sing a second piece to us. Thank you very much.
again, I want to thank um, Deborah for that ministry in song. Uh, that was tremendous, and the Lord bless you. And thank you very much for driving all the way up from God.